Okay, some of you have asked how to create the phases that I use in my clips. And uh, while it took me a long time to actually get this working the right way and also make it um, the most understandable, uh, I think I've now actually um, sort of, you know, got a version going where I know that uh, everyone will be able to follow. So uh, simple steps, really. So what we do, we'll fire up Modeler. So we'll go and use a, a we'll create a box. And we'll hit the N key. And in there, we'll type 10 centimeters for the width, 10 centimeters for the height and we'll leave depth at zero and I think that's about it so we can close this in the background it will have already created our box it's very small so uh, if you deselect the option so we'll just click on this again and then press the A key we'll actually have it uh, you know resized to where we can actually have a look at it now if you use the uh, magnifying glass and hold the mouse down and go slightly to the left we can sort of like back up just a little bit there Okay, so what we've got to do now, since we have nothing selected, is use the right mouse key, drag it around these polygons. Uh, if you let go of the, of the mouse button, you will have two of these selected. They have to be diagonal. So we'll press the uh, delete key. And so we have one diagonal left over. Now, what we normally should do, or at least we had to do in, I think it was Lightwave 5.6 or something like that. So if you're using an old version of Lightwave, you're going to have to perform a unify. So let's go to detail, and if you have the Windows version, there's a Unify Normals, that might work, and then we also have on the Windows and Macintosh side, Unify Polygons. Now if I press that here, it says no polygons uh, eliminated. Well, I think uh, in Lightwave 7, or was it 8, they uh, they completely redid the whole method, so we don't need to uh, unify anything here. Um, so we go to the tab uh, Multiply, um, and then we go down to Mirror, and we want to mirror it on the X axis. So press that and now you can see we've got a, a perfect X here. Now um, I'm, the, I'm on the uh, perspective view right now. So if I show you in 3D, you'll see that, you know, it's a thin layer. There's, you know, nothing really 3D about it yet. So what we want to do is uh, go all the way up to extrude then press the N key again, enter zero for the X and Y, and then let's put in one meter for the Z axis. And there we go, if you press return and click this box away, you see we now have a 3D element. And that, believe it or not, is already our phaser. That's uh, all there is to it. So uh, what we want to do now is just save this. I'll make it easy and just put it on the uh, the desktop. I'll just call this uh, phaser.lightwaveobject. So uh, we'll just save that as phaser.lightwaveobject. And then we can close down model, and that's it already. So we'll load up object, and then we'll go desktop. Right, so let me just select the camera here and uh, just move backwards a little bit. Just go to the modify uh, tab and then move. Yep, that's really all I want. So I'll just show you around. So there you go. That's our phaser object. If you don't have a texture, say a JPEG that you, uh, you know, nothing like a bright light source, uh, if you don't have that, what we can do is uh, create another um, light wave layout. So I'll, I'll clear the scene. And just to make it uh, as simple as possible uh, for those who you know don't know how to do this, so I'll uh, I'll put our current light source, light source, the default light, already in the the standard um, layout. I'll just transform that into a point light and activate the lens flare, and uh, we'll put that uh, down to seventy five percent. I'd say get rid of everything else except central glow and red glow. If we do a quick pre-render, we'll go to the camera settings, um, put in 400 pixels by 400 pixels, so we've got a perfect square, do another quick render. Press the F9 key, and that's basically the color of our phaser. Now, again, if, if you already know you don't you, you want to have a different color, um, you can go in and here and change it to you know green or whatever. And uh, but but because we've got red outer glow, it's really got the the red color here. And for us, it's it's it, just for the demo, it's uh, it's good enough. Um, later on, though, we will be needing uh, another white one for a, a different method of uh, setting uh, textures to our phaser. So we'll save this one as a JPEG. And uh, let's see, I'll just call this red phaser map dot JPEG. Oops, what did I do there? There we go. And uh, while we're at it, we'll deselect that. We've already got a white one there, and then render out another version. 
So that's our white one. Now this one, I might want to increase the intensity just a bit. So I'll put that uh, down to 100%. Render out another one. There we go. That's a nice version. And we'll send that, save that as another JPEG and call that white phaser map.jpg and now we can go back and load up our current scene so I'll just clear the whole scene again and get our phaser object back so just back up the camera again there we go not too far away I want to be able to see what we're doing here just give it a slight rotation as well okay so we'll go to the surface editor and in there, we'll set some of our texture uh, settings. So what I want to do here for the first example, set this to black. Uh, set this to about 50%. And well, so luminosity 50% to make sure the diffuse is at 0%. And then we'll go where it says color. We'll press on the T button for texture. And then we'll load up our uh, red phaser map. There we go. Now, all we have to do now is press automatic sizing because we already told it how big it's supposed to be in modeler it will fit uh, you know the, uh, the image will fit nicely to our object and basically that's it uh, we can also activate the additive feature here make just make sure it's an image map and it's a planar uh, projection and that's basically all we need later on we'll have to go back into position to actually make the fractal noise move but with our current uh, texture we won't need to do that because you won't really see any differences um, and again it depends on what kind of phaser or laser you're trying to do you're trying to achieve so with this one it would just be you know a plain simple one so if you're doing like a, a burst of like you know a few milliseconds of phaser, uh, phaser fire or laser fire you obviously won't see any detail in that but uh, for our example you'll see what I mean later on so uh, use this texture and then we have to also make sure that in here we go to uh, additive transparency so we've got to make sure that our own texture you know the black around here in the JPEG uh, is uh, set to transparency as well so uh, that's about it I think now uh, what we want to do also is later on uh, or basically in a minute just get this light and use that as a source but right now I'll just hit the F9 key see what happens there we go Believe it or not, that's one of our first phases, lasers. It doesn't look too spectacular right now, but uh, we'll get there. Now, to uh, resize this, to make it more uh, impressive, you can change the settings in the textures and uh, make it glow a bit more. But uh, also, just a simple resize uh, will help. So we'll select the object, and we only got one, so it's the phaser. And we'll say we'll go to stretch, for example. I'll just lock the X and Y axis and then we'll move the Z axis so you can see we're increasing it and it will always look the same. So what I'm going to do now is just rotate it and just make it uh, a bit more easier to see. There we go. Hit, hit the F9 key again. And there you go. You sort of get the idea what we're, what we're doing here. Now, uh, the light already in this scene, um, we can rename this. Fire. And yeah, I was going to go with laser, phaser source and something, but uh, I just wanted to keep this simple and do it as fast as possible. So uh, we'll go to setup, uh, motion options, and make sure that the light is uh, is selected, and then we'll parent it to the actual phaser object. And then we'll go to modify, move, and then make sure that we set all this to zero, so that it's at uh, the exact point where we want it. There we go. Now we've just got to go to the properties of the light. Uh, well, we can leave the light intensity here. That's actually okay. Then we go to lens flare, uh, change that to uh, 100%, and just deselect these two. So red out of glow and central ring. That should do nicely. And then maybe change fade with distance to two meters. That's about it. So close that down as well, and do another quick test run with F9 key. And there you go. Now we have a, a kind of, uh, you know, a source where it's actually coming from the phaser. So um, if you're not sure, what we can actually do a color pick, maybe say, you know, make it as as similar as this or just give it a, a slightly orangey, reddy color. Um, maybe something like that. Hit an F9 key again. And there you go. We've got something firing from here. So this is actually the most simple way to create a, a phaser, laser, and uh, 